Hello friends, I am Professor Vagmadi Biyar, working as Assistant Professor in Agronomy Department. Today we can see the practical on the preparation of methods, uh, the preparation methods of vermicompost and the green manure. We can see the first one, uh, what is the vermicompost? And, uh, this is a novel technique of converting uh, decomposable organic waste into the valuable compost through the earthworm. It is called as vermicompost. The vermicompost is a scientific method of making compost by uh, using earthworms. Uh, they are uh, commonly found living in uh, soil, feeding on the biomass and excreting it in a digested form. The vermiculture uh, means the uh, worm farming. Earthworm feeds on this organic waste material and give out the excreta in the form of the vermicast that are rich in the nitrates and the minerals such as the phosphorus, magnesium, calcium, potassium. These are used as fertilizer to enhance the uh, soil quality. The vermicompost is also rich in the source like calcium, magnesium, copper, zinc, iron and the manganese. The earthworm remain in the moist soil and they convert uh, one ton of organic matter into half of uh, half ton of the vermicompost within 60 to 100 days. And the total uh, 300 species of earthworms are useful with uh, 3 to uh, 6 cm in length and the, each, the adult of the Aishina foetida, this earthworm species developed by MPQ Rauri. Uh, lays 5 to 6 eggs uh, and these uh, eggs required uh, 15 to 20 days for further hatching and total life period of this Asian foetida is about 2 to 3 days. This is a uh, little about the vermicompost and the species of the vermicompost and the uh, source of the vermicompost. Next one you can see the procedure for preparation of vermicompost that is to prepare the compost either in plastic or concrete tank can be used. The size of the tanks depends upon the availability of the raw materials. Uh, collect the biomass and place it under the sun for about 8 to 12 days. And uh, now chop it, uh, uh, it to the required size using the cutter. Then prepare cow dung slurry, sprinkler it on the heap for the quick decomposition. Add a layer that is 2 to 3 inch of the soil or sand at the bottom of the tank. Uh, then now prepare uh, fine bedding by adding the particular partially decomposed rot. Uh, or partially decomposed uh, cow dung, dried leaves and other biodegradable waste collected from the field and the kitchen and they distribute them evenly on the sand layer. Then continue adding both the chop and bio waste and partially decomposed cow dung layer wise into the tank up to the depth of 0.5 to 10, uh, 1 feet. Then after adding all the bio waste, release the earthworm species over the mixture and cover the compost mixture with dry straw or gunny bags. Sprinkler water on the regular basis to maintain the moisture on the bay compost. Cover the tank with the thatch roof to prevent the entry of the ants, lizards, mouse and snakes, etc. and to protect the compost from the rainwater and the direct sunshine. Uh, have a frequent check to avoid the compost from the overheating and maintain proper moisture and the temperature. This is a, you can see the photographs of the different uh, beds uh, to fill the uh, compost material and they uh, release the earthworms uh, and this is the uh, finally uh, prepared the vermicompost. Then the next point you can see the advantages of vermicomposting. Uh, the vermicompost it helps to the increase the soil fertility, increases the availability of NPK and the micronutrients and as a, uh, act as a natural tilling agent that is earthworm uh, considered as a natural tilling agent and there will be increased the aeration in the soil. And then increasing the water holding capacity of the soil, less erosion of the soil, check the evaporation of moisture, increases the microbial activity, healthy growth of crops, increase yield of the crop along with the quality, develop roots of the plants, improve the physical structure of the soil, then vermicomposting, increasing the fertility and the water resistance of the soil and also helps in germination, plant growth and crop yield and the nurtures the natural soil with the plant growth hormones such as oxygen, zebralins, etc. These are the advantages of the vermicompost. Next one you can see the disadvantage of the vermicompost or vermicomposting. It is a time consuming process and takes a long, uh, as long as 6 months to convert the orga organic matter into the usable forms and it releases very so, uh, foul odor. Vermicomposting is, uh, is uh, required high maintenance. The feed uh, uh, has to be added periodically and care should be taken that worms are not uh, flooded into much uh, to eat. The beans should not be too dry to wait. The moisture level need to be monitored periodically. They uh, nurture the growth of pests and the pathogens such as the fruit, uh, flies, then the centipedes and the flies. These are the disadvantages of the vermicomposting. 
next point you can see uh, that is in green manuring the concept of or definition of green manuring is the practice of enriching the soil by turning undecomposed plant residues or the material of the leguminous plants under the soil they also defined as the practice of plowing the green plant tissues grown in the field or adding green plants and the leaves from the outside and incorporating them into the soil for improving the structure as well as fertility of the soil then uh, next point that is green manuring crops the crops grown for the purpose of restoring or increasing the organic matter in a soil is known as the green manure crops this is the green manuring and the green manuring crops next one the types of green manuring uh, first one green manuring in situ any crop or plants generally leguminous grown uh, and plowed in the situ is called as green manuring situ for example sesbenia dencha then sanhem then phila philis uh, philippesa uh, sera then cowpea green gram then black gram then bursim these are the examples of uh, leguminous green manure crops mostly used as a green manuring situ then green leaf manuring that is ex situ consists of gathering green biomass that is generally used and things from the nearby location or the burns or the field boundaries or the from the wasteland and adding uh, it into the soil for example cassia uh, auriculata neem clericidia then uh, lucana lucasipella then cassia tora then teprosia purpurea then vitex uh, nigunda then karanja then calotropis these are the examples of green lamb, uh, leaf manuring in ex situ or in green leaf manuring then next one the green leaf uh, green manures Uh, that is a green leaf manures, uh, especially dencha, sanem, glyceria, uh, cassia, green gram, cowpea, soybean, then uh, <coughs> subabo, then green ma- uh, leaf manures, uh, manure that is sun uh, sunflowers, esbenia, calotropis, adathoda, uh, then buckwheat, uh, then uh, centrosem, then scrotellaria. Are also the examples of the green leaf manures. Next one, you can see the photographs of different uh, green leaf manu- uh, green manure crops are used uh, for the green manure. That is uh, Crotalia densia, that is Sanhem. Sesbenia aculeata, that is the densia. Then Cowpea, then Cluster Bean, then Sesbenia rostrata. Next one, the advantages of green manure. Uh, it helps the improving the physical and chemical properties of soil. That is example, uh, builds up the soil structure, improve the till, formation of the crumbs in heavy soil, increasing the water holding capacity. The green manure crops absorb the nutrient from lower layer of the soil and leave them in the soil surface layer when ploughed it uh, for use of uh, by the succeeding crop. Then helps in the maintaining organic matter status of the soil, acts as a fo- source of food and energy to the soil microbes and increasing their population. Then helps in the release of the nutrients in the available form by use of uh, uh, form by for, for the use of uh, crops and also for example gm crops increases the solubility of the lime phosphate because of increasing its microbial activity then prevent leaching of the nutrient to lower layers increasing aeration of rice soil especially by stimulating the activities of surface films of the algae and the bacteria then reduces the soil temperature protects the soil from erosion action of the water as it uh, forms the canopy over the soil then leguminous green manure crops helps in the nitrogen fixation and adds the same to the soil that is for example 60 to 100 kg nitrogen per hectare in single season then green manure crops like uh, crotalia gensia that is sunhem uh, adds 17 tons per hectare biomass and 160 kg nitrogen per hectare then dencha that is 25 to 26 ton per hectare biomass and 18.5 kg nitrogen per hectare it helps in the soil uh, amelioration or the management that is sesbenia aculeata that is dencha in soil when applied continuously for 4 to 5 season green leaf manuring uh, the green leaf manuring crops like uh, argiban mexicana then tamarind uh, indicus are preferring effects in the soil side then certain green manure crops like uh, fungemia neem leaves are reported to control the insect pests and increase yield uh, to the extent of 15 20% compared to the no green manuring this is the major advantage of green manuring uh, next point that is this advantage of green manuring Uh, that is first one harboring uh, sl- slugs and snails as a green manure crops as perfect opportunity for snails and slugs in which they is to be bred this means uh, they their number will be increase <coughs> and might ultimately affect some of the your, uh, your crops such as vegetables second is sudden as it consumes the time as a farmer or gardeners you have to allow to uh, allow up, up to the m- month after cutting back and uh, rotating the green manure crops before sowing a new crop such it because 
because some crops are allopathic, meaning they are naturally leave their some uh, toxic substance in the soil that they stick the germination of the new crops. Third one that is our harboring pests and disease. The uh, aside from the harboring uh, sludge and snails, green manure crops should also the harbor pests and disease. Uh, or the alternate host of the pest and disease such incidents may increase if the green manure crops is not take, uh, kept uh, free from the disease and pest. Then use of using the moisture. As green manure crops you also utilize the moisture uh, like any other crops. If the moisture is limited in certain area, they will use uh, uh, all uh, available moisture which would have otherwise been cons uh, conserved during the fallow. These are the disadvantages of green manure. Next, last point that is characteristics of good green manure crops. Uh, green manure crops should be multi-purpose use, uh, then uh, short duration, fast growing, high nutrient accumulation ability, tolerance to shade, flood, drought and adverse temperatures, wide ecological adaptability, efficient in water use or use of water, early onset of biological nitrogen fixation, high nitrogen accumulation rate, timely release of the nutrients, photoperiods insensitivity, high seed production, high seed viability, Easy in uh, incorporation, ability to cro cross the inoculant or responsive to uh, inoculation, then paste and tissue resistance, then high nitrogen sinks in the underground flat parts. These are the characteristics of gold grain manure crops. Thank you. This is a today's uh, practical uh, regarding the preparation methods of vermicompost and the green manure. Thank you.